Comment vas-tu aujourd'hui? Moi, je vais très bien. Merci Dieu. Si vous parlez français, corrigez-moi, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> oh my God, I'm sweating now. I've been practicing that for a month. So if you speak French, can you tell me please if I'm right? <laughs> so in today's video, we are going to do characterization. Most of you asked me to upload videos on characterization in Blossoms of the Savannah. And that is what I'm going to do. We are going to start with chapter one, but I'll do all the chapters. In chapter one, we have five characters. We have Ole Kailo, Mama Mila Noi, Tayo, Resian, and Uncle Simirin. So we're gonna give them their traits in the chapter. Before we go to the book, I wanna teach you three things. How to identify a character trait, or how to give a character their traits or attributes. And there are three ways. One, you have to check what the other says about that character and number two what the character does this includes his actions number three what other character says about that one specific character so those are the three tips on how to give any character their trait in any story you guys start with Ole Kaila and you know who he is already the father to Tayo and Tristan and the husband to Jane Milanoi he is short tempered. He gets angry very easily or very quickly. First instance, we learn it from Tayo. That is on page one, first paragraph at the middle. Beneath her, down at the courtyard, she could see her father moving in passing. He was organizing and directing with obvious shortness of temper. So, up to that point, we can say Ole Kailo is short tempered. Again on page one, the second last paragraph, again it's Tayo. Although the distance would not allow her to hear what he was telling the loaders, Tayo felt a mild, of, a mild but quite genuine twinge of sympathy for the poor fellows down there, for she knew the sting of her father's tongue. Another evidence to support Ole Kailo being short-tempered is on page 4. We see Ole Kailo is short-tempered whereby he yelled at one of the workers. Let us go page 4, last paragraph in the middle. When she had him yell at one of the workers, a cold note of anger and resentment tightened in the pit of her stomach. You can continue from there. So that support. And we also have page five, the second last paragraph. Here comes Papai quick. Let's go. We better be found in the company of Yeyo when he comes. Otherwise, he will spoil our day with his sharp tongue. The second trait, he is optimistic. And that is on page three. He learned this from Tayo, whereby she said that. Our father hopes that the business will be a success. In three, the last paragraph. Resian I don't know any better than I don't know any better than you. Father thinks that the shop will be a success. Number three, he is stubborn. We also learn this from Tayo here by Scribe Olekailo as being stubborn in nature. So that is page four, the last paragraph. I can't promise that with certainty. I said and tore her look away from her sister's face. You know the stubborn nature of father. So stubborn. He's also hard working. Like I know himself knew that he had been working hard to prepare for the day when he will no longer be employed. That is on page eight. The last paragraph. He knew that he had worked his fingers to the bone over the years preparing for that day when he was no longer going to be employed. When you read uh, the whole of page 8 and page 9, you'll also get to see that Olegailo was hard working. Maybe that is why he was promoted from being a clerk to a commercial manager. And lastly, we can say he is loving. He loves his wife, Mama Milanoi, and his daughter, Tayo. And that is on page 9. You told that he loved Mama Milanoi from the moment he saw her at the church service, and 22 years later, he was still obsessed to her. Page 9. 
last paragraph. I'm going to start there almost at the end. From the moment he saw her, he had been obsessed and against all odds and despite all efforts, he was still obsessed 22 years later. And on page 10, we can say he loves his daughter Tayo and uh, Tayo was his bride. So you'll read that on page 10. So we move to the second character that is Tayo, the pride of all the Tayo. For one, Tayo is sympathetic. She sympathizes with the offloaders because she knew the sting of her father's tongue. That is on page one. The second last paragraph, although the distance will not allow her to hear what he was telling the loaders, Tayo felt a mean but quite genuine twinge of sympathy for the poor fellows down there. Two, she is emotional and she had to cry when she thought of leaving Nakuru town. That is on page two. Page 2, the second paragraph. Steaming those thoughts out of her mind, she raised her head and looked through the morning sunbeams that gleamed uh, that gleamed brightly across the rooftops of Nakuru town. That beloved town that was the mother of all flamingos, uh, a town that she was now about to leave. Tears welled in her eyes. She blinked suddenly and rapped. She is also optimistic on page 4, whoever she tells Resia she should have faith in their father and hope for the best. That is page 4. Uh, okay, the first paragraph up there. You read the whole thing, but I'm going to read this line. Let us have faith in him and hope for the best. That is Sayo was telling Resia. And lastly, she is loving she loved her boyfriend that is why it was painful for her to leave to leave him behind and she also loved nakuru town that is on page three read the whole of page three you're gonna understand that racia now number one she is curious and she is curious of how life is gonna be like in nasila page two the last paragraph tayo aao what do you think life is going to be like in Nasila? Two, she is pessimistic and this is a person who thinks bad things are going to happen in the future. And she asks Tayo, what will happen if father's job does not do well? Page three, the last paragraph. I'm somehow worried, dear sister. Christian's voice dropped a little with apprehension. What do you think will happen to us if the shop father intends to open does not become as successful as he hopes? She is determined to join the Ijatan University. She tells Taya that she does not want to work at their father's shop. She wants to go to the Ijatan University, take a course on veterinary science and becomes a veterinary doctor. She also asks Taya to talk to their father to persuade him to allow them to go to the Egerton University. That is on page four. I don't want to work at the father's shop. Resian declared her pretty face hardening. Uh -huh. I want to come back to Nakuru and join the Egerton University. So you'll have to read the whole page to understand better. Next is Mama Milanai, the mother to Resian and Sayo and the wife to John Olekailo. First, she's prayerful or religious. There is on page six. Remember before they start at their journey, Mama Milanoi had to pray. There is on page six. When Mama Milanoi's voice wavered a little, let's pray that the good Lord give us journey masses. And she prayed. But two hard working. She was busy packing while Resian and Tayo were at the window watching. Page five, the third paragraph. Tayo, what on earth are you doing there at the window instead of helping me pack? Their mother asked sharply. And to Resian, now downstairs and check what is happening. Now we are moving to the last character who is Uncle Simi One. He is a traditionalist. He had four wives, and uh, in the text we saw that he was a strict Atheran to his people, customs, and tradition. And we also told he represented the Ilmolilian clan, and he represented Olekaelo in all the traditional ceremonies. 
it's somehow long but it's here on page 11 to page 12 so you're gonna read page 11 the last paragraph to page 12 but let me read this and he was a strict adherent to his people customs and customs and tradition for which reason he was respected and appreciated by the elders and you can add he had four wives reliable that is on page 12 when Olakaila was away in Nakuru he told that uncle Simiren could run all kind of errands for him page 12 the second paragraph during Parsime Olakaila's absence Simiren uh, ran all the kinds of errands for him many a times he sent money he sent him money to purchase livestock alongside his own he drove them at a great market and sold them at a profit and brought back the money to him and working again on page 12 the same paragraph um, he was running all the kind of errands for uh, for Ole Kailo. he was going to the Goretti market to sell the cattle and all the other things that he was doing all in page 12 they said the third paragraph lastly he is calm that is on page 13 when Ole Kailo called the elders megalomaniacs uncle Simiren did not argue with him here to let the matters take their own course. Let us read the, the first paragraph in the middle. Persime had got angry and called the clan elders megalomaniacs who were still trapped in a archaic tradition that were better buried and forgotten. Simiren did not argue with him then and nor would he do so now. He would rather have matters take their own course. And that is the end of our lesson today. Thank you so much for watching. In case you have any question, just write me on the comments and I'll be very happy to respond. And in case you want me to upload a video on anything, let me know. And I'm also working on the request that you asked me last time. Thank you and bye-bye.